So this is a heartbreaking story. Uh, it's being reported that an elderly New Jersey woman had recently passed away because she was not able to pay her electric bill. Well, that is, uh, let me explain here. Uh, Linda Daniels, uh, she was 68 years old, and uh, she was on hospice. She's been very sick for a while and actually relied on uh, an oxygen machine in order to breathe. That oxygen machine relied on electricity to use. Uh, so when the uh, local utility, PSEG, cut off her power um, due to an electric bill, that unfortunately led her to not have that ability to have uh, oxygen, and she passed away from congestive heart failure. That happened last week. Now, uh, Linda's daughter, Desiree, was with her on the day that she died. Uh, she said, we put one ice pack here by her side and one on her other side. You know, due to the heat, of course, we were fanning her. It was so hot in here, and she couldn't breathe. It was unbearable. Since Linda's primary oxygen, which plugged in, didn't work, they ended up using a smaller reserve, and when that was empty, they ended up calling EMS. Now, EMS did come. They brought a portable air unit. Um, and, of course, during the time that she was using that portable oxygen unit, they were calling PSEG, pleading with them to turn the power back on. Hey, our mother is literally dying. It, look... We don't care about the air conditioning. We don't care about any of that. All we want is that oxygen machine in which she uses to live to be able to work. And we can't keep relying on EMS. We can't rely on, uh, you know, spare tanks. We, she needs oxygen 24-7. She cannot live without it. Please turn the power back on. Now, the company, of course, had refused. Now, get a load to how, uh, of how they treated her. One rep had told, uh, according to Desiree, uh, told me to, quote, stop calling. Just stop calling us already. There's too many tickets in the system. So what, you're too busy? Should that not take priority? Look, I understand it was very hot, uh, you know, over the weekend or last week, uh, especially last week when this had apparently happened on a Thursday. Um a lot of people look in the heat, elderly people, uh, young children are more susceptible to heat-related illnesses and, of course, uh, death due to those. This was one of those cases. There should have been a way to, for them to turn the power back on. Only for a short, you know, not even for a short time. There should have been a way for them to turn the power back on because, again, she needed that to survive. This wasn't about air conditioning. This was about air period now not only that but they said oh we're on our way and they kept telling us that but on that day nobody showed up now power was restored the day after she died but not during the day not during when it actually could have saved her life now desiree says look um this medical equipment we had to register it with the power company so it's not like they didn't know that this was an issue. They knew. They knew we had it registered. They knew that they could not shut the power off on us. But they did anyway. Now, how much did they owe? It's an interesting question. Uh, now, as of May 29th, there was apparently a balance of about $1,800. However, another bill indicates that $300 was sent in April, $450 another month, uh, and two days before Linda died, $500 was sent in. So, you know, that's not quite $1,800 for sure. But they had made attempts to pay this. And look, I understand that, yes, you have to pay your bills, right? But a three to $500 electric bill. And look, I don't even know if it's that month, just the month of May. But it can't be cheap using one of those uh, things to breathe. I mean, again, it's got to be on 24 hours, this machine, um, because she needs to breathe 24 hours. It's not like you can take it off for a couple of hours to save power. So it's going to generate probably a lot of electricity. Uh, and that might be the reason that it's so high. And also due to the devastating heat wave that we've been having as well. 
I think everybody's seen their electricity bill skyrocket as of recently. Um, but nonetheless, that amount of money is incredibly high to have to pay. Especially for somebody who's 60 years old in hospice care and uh, requires a machine to breathe for her. She wasn't doing well, uh, and unfortunately, being poor just pushed her over the edge. Now, PSEG tells eyewitnesses that it did not notify the customer that, or I'm sorry, that it did notify the customer that their account was behind and that their service would be shut off. PSEG also said in part, quote, because there was no response from the customer, the customer was shut off. They had not notified of, a, of any medical circumstances in the home. Now, that is a direct contradiction to what the daughter, Desiree, had been saying. And to kind of prove her point, their mother had died that day. You think if somebody's life is in the balance that they're not going to call, that they're not going to try to get a hold of this uh, power company to try to turn the electricity back on? Again, there are records of payments. They knew they were behind. And they were trying to rectify their bill. And what happened? PSE and G, in my opinion are trying to lie about it. And as far as the medical emergency or the, the medical stuff, look, the daughter said it was registered. So uh, look, I guess if you want to take the comp power company's side, then that's, I guess that's your prerogative. But there's somebody who's dead who doesn't have to be dead. And there are records of payments. And so it just blows that whole story. Their cover your ass story away because that's all it is oh no we're, we're reviewing our records no there's an investigation into this now but anyway look i think somebody made a big mistake this company in this company policy made a huge mistake and now of course somebody lost their life because of it it's a great example how power companies um and poverty work hand in hand to uh you know, deny people power. I mean, look, this is, this is an example of how poverty kills. I mean, this is the biggest example of how poverty kills. Uh, and another reason why we shouldn't have private for-profit power companies. No, municipal non-profit power companies, and preferably ones that run on clean energy. That is, of course, cheaper, it's better for the environment, uh, and it makes situations like this, I think, would make sure that situations like this might not happen in the future. And uh, because at the end of the day, you can see it from the way that they treated this young, this this uh, older woman who didn't have the money to be able to pay her bill, that all they care about is money. All they care about is getting paid. And that is not the system that we need to be in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.